Today, as you listen to this teaching by Pastors Ralph and Joanne Hone, we hope you'll enjoy it and learn some practical ways to walk into the awesome life God has for you. For more information and for more free teaching, visit our website, www.tapintothesource.com. Well, today we're taking a little bit of a, sort of a little bit of a break of the series we've been in, but not really, because it's such a part of what we've been talking about with his presence or his provision. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the look of love. And um, on Valentine's weekend, our focus is love, you know, and whether you're an elementary age child or a senior citizen or anything in between, this is the weekend where we show love. And we're supposed to show love to our friends and to our family and our sweethearts if you have one. And that's what this is all about. And normally on this Sunday, we would talk about how we can better love each other and how we can better love our neighbor and love our spouse and all of those things. But one of the things is sometimes we have a hard time loving other people because we ourselves have not yet been fully filled with a revelation of the love that we have access to ourselves to receive. I really believe that if we could get a first revelation of how to receive God's immense, amazing love, we would be able to love others out of an abundance. I think too many of us are trying to love each other and love our spouses and our families out of a bankrupt heart. The only way to fill that is with the love of God. Human love will only last so long, it'll only get you so far. But we need to have a revelation of what his love even looks like. Our society doesn't know who God even is. They don't know what his love looks like. They think he's a God who's out to get them. We need to see and have a full revelation because when we understand that we need to receive this love, because his love is there for you. He loves you. Whether you reject him or not, he loves you. And his love will never change for you. But we need to have hearts that open up just a little bit more and receive just a little bit more of his love. Because when we flow in abundance of his love and understand what his love looks like, now suddenly we can love the people around us the way God loves us. Because it's an abundance, it's an overflow. So we want to talk about that. What are the characteristics of God's love? Because if we don't know what it looks like, we won't know how to receive it. 1 John 4.10, I like what it says here. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. See, we think it's about us loving God. It's really the big, the big understanding is though that God loves you. No matter what you do, he's going to love you. He's already made up his mind. He's not going to change his mind. It doesn't matter how bad you get. You know, when people do things that get bad, sometimes they're bad. God looks at it and says, I still love them anyways. So that's the great mystery that God unconditionally loves you and I. You know, 1 John four sixteen, and it says, so and so we know and rely on the love God has for us because God is love. As we understand what love actually looks like, we will know what God looks like. And let me tell you, just with some stuff going on recently in our culture, we'll just put it that way so I don't get political here, love has been twisted to look like something completely different than what God has for us. You know, um, love has, has hooks and, and all of these you know, stipulations and conditions, but that's not what God's love is. So as we understand what love looks like, we're going to understand what God looks like. And you know, we've taught this before on, on this, but there are some things that we just need to keep being reminded of and keep getting deeper revelation. Have you guys ever read a scripture where you could have read it a dozen times and all of a sudden the 13th time, it's like, whoa, I didn't see that before, anyone? 
There are so many facets of God's love that this is something we need to keep hitting again and again because we need to keep getting new revelations, new things that God loves in us of his character. You know, for, I, I like um, the love chapter. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to read just a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. In verse, um, well, first of all, usually we take this chapter and we look at how we're to love other people, which is true. But if God is love and we look at the love chapter, we can read through this and see the very character of God in this. So instead of going through this and looking at this, how we love others, I want you to see how God loves you. And once we understand how God loves us, then it's easy to love other people the same way. So verse uh, four in uh, 1 Corinthians 13 says, love endures long and is patient and kind. So God endures long, and God is patient, and he's kind with us. He doesn't say, well, I'm going to be good to you if you jump through this hoop, jump through that hoop, and if you just show up and you smile at the right time, I'm going to love you. As long as your breath doesn't stink, I'm going to love you. Come on, somebody. (laughs) No, God says that he'll always be kind It's always long-lasting, so it's not like, well, I loved them last week, but this week, I mean, they did some stuff that really upset me. God will continue to love you and I no matter what we're walking through. Do any of you, and maybe none of you guys, but maybe just me. Just the online crowd, Joy. Okay. Yeah, we can't see them, but we see you in your PJs anyways. (laughs) Any of you have someone who just keeps doing something annoying to you over and over and over again. And anybody? Okay. None of you. Any of you waiting for someone to finally get it right, and it's just like, oh, are they ever going to do this? Or maybe somebody who's always running late. You know, it's always that half hour, 45 minutes late, and it's like, oh, this is getting to me. I can't take this anymore. The good news with God is his love is patient. And he is not in a place, he's willing to wait forever for us. He's just sitting there waiting for us. He's waiting for us to respond to his love. He's waiting for us to reach out to him. He's not impatient. He is patient. He's waiting. He's not giving up on us. You know, when we feel like smacking somebody's head against a wall of going, get it! You know, finally, get it. Come on, get it right. Those, this is church, honey, these people. I know. Well, they, may, they, wouldn't, they want to do it. Okay, smack your head on a pillow or something like that. But, but he's not like that. He's going, okay, you messed up, but we're going to pick up. We're going to do it again. And a hundred times later, he's still saying, okay, we can get this right. He's still your cheerleader. He hasn't given up on you because he is patient. He is a patient and kind God. So So what is the next verse? Love never is envious, nor boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily or proud. You know, God is the I am. He doesn't need to show up with tricks. Did you get that? He is who he is. He's already made his mind up. He's not trying to put a show on to get everybody's attention. He will sit quietly like a gentleman, and he's already determined that he is going to not be boastful. He's not going to be proud. He's not going to wave flags all around you to, to, to try to get your... T- he is there for you every time you and I need it. He doesn't bail out on us. He doesn't have a bad day. He's on all the time. Well, uh, have, have any of you ever had a, a boss or a leader or anything like that in your life or a parent who just demands your respect and love? And he's not necessarily worthy of it, but they just demand it. And it's like, no, you are going to respect me and you are going to like it. And um, you just don't have an option. You know the kind of people I'm talking about? Okay. If you're one of them, <laughs> just smile. Just smile. <laughs> Or don't nudge the person beside you going, that's you he's talking about, that's not a good thing. But that is not the kind of God that our God is, because that's not love. We can't manipulate people um, for them to honor and respect. You know, pride says I am worthy of honor. 
you know, but that humility says, I'm going to serve you, and out of that will come honor and respect. And our God gives us a choice. We don't have to worship him. We don't have to serve him. We don't have to love him. But instead of demanding our love, instead he woos us. He romances us into a love relationship with him. Because he's not proud. He's not going to demand. He's not going to manipulate you for it. He is humbly just loving you. He is serving you to a point where you respond to him. How much of, you know, it's so much better to be able to respond to somebody's love than have to serve out of being demanded to. Anyone of you like, say, anyone like being manipulated and things demand? No. So that's not our God. He doesn't demand things of us, but what he does is he romances us towards him. You know, and we just, joined, uh, Pastor Joanne just talked about that, and that's the next verse, is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. And then the next verse, it is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. In other words, he is not trying to manipulate something to look like something that it isn't to hook you or to get you. He is the perfect gentleman. Today around the world, they want to talk about love and they say, if you really want to know what love's all about, there's 50 shades of gray. I said, you ought to call it 50 shades of black. God has nothing to do with that. See, God doesn't manipulate and work and a little bit of this. God will romance you without an agenda to hurt you, ladies. He's not out to get you for anything. He's out to give his love to you and let you know how important you are in his eyes. He's prepared to woo you men and ladies and bring you into, uh, into a relationship with him just so he can bless you some more. Well, what's his agenda? I said he wants to just bless your life a little bit more. He'd like to give you a little more peace. Could you use some? Yes. A little bit more joy. A little bit more patience. A little more kindness. A little more gentleness. A little more faithfulness. Just a little more of him is all he's trying to give you. He is not looking to twist or manipulate. Yet the world is saying if you want to have the sizzling hot of whatever, here's what you have to do. Well, the Bible says you're already that. Did you just get that? You don't have to do anything to get God's attention. He's, you've already, he's already got, you already got his undivided attention. The Bible says that even the hairs on your head are numbered. So the, some of the guys that are bold, they say, I'm just trying to cut the workload down for the Lord. <laughs> But you know what the thing I love about is, you know, sometimes when people hurt us over and over again, we tend to be very rude, very short with them, very, look, you're not getting my time anymore. I am not, I'm just, I'm not putting up with it anymore. Beautiful thing with God is he's not like that, is we can hurt him over and over and over again, and we can be rebellious, and we can run from him as far as we think we can go. Man, you're not running from God, you know, little hint for you. The thing is that he still just keeps loving us in return. He still is just waiting. He doesn't return evil for evil. Just because you've run, after, run against him or rebelled against him, he's not devising an evil plot against you. He loves you. And he, are there going to be consequences that you naturally bring on because you've rebelled? Yes. Yes. But it's not God trying to get you in return for what we've done. And I love that because it's, he's just a gentleman. He's there. You cannot push God away. I've seen people try. They rebel so they go, I don't want anything to do with it. I'm going to just rebel. I'm going to push God away. You can't push God away. You can walk out of his perfect will for your life. You can step out of a place where you're out of his blessing, but you cannot push him away. So love does not insist on its own rights or its own way for it is not self-seeking. Let me read that one again. Love does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. In other words, God is not working you to get something from you because he needs it. He would love for you to be in relationship with him. Mm -hmm. He yearns in his heart for us to be in relationship for him, with him. But he's not going to manipulate you to get you there. 
He's going to woo you. He's going to keep showing you how incredible he is. He's going to keep doing stuff for you. Listen, we do some bonehead things sometimes, people. Don't, would you agree? Oh, uh, yeah. And you're thinking those angels are working like overtime. As you know, Joanne says at our house with five boys, me being one of them, she says, I think the angels are on standby all the time. Because boys tend to do some crazy things sometimes. We want to push the agenda just a little further. Well, God's not pushing an agenda a little further. He's not trying to get, he's just saying, I love you. I want to just show myself to you. And it's so incredible because all he is doing is wooing us constantly. He's not pointing his finger. You, I, can't, I know what you did last week. I'm going to tell you something right now. That's your mother calling, by the way. <laughs> The next, um, the next verse is, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. You know, God's not moody. You and I are moody. We really are. No. We really are. Let's just face it now, okay? And I'll oh, stop being so shocked. <sighs> I'm just playing. It's like a woman going shopping for the shoe sale, and she gets there, and it's exactly the shoes she wants, but they don't have the size. That's not moody. That's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll stand corrected. Go ahead, honey. Yeah, don't mess with the shoe story. <laughs> no, but God's not moody. There's he doesn't. No moodiness in there. <laughs> We don't have to worry about catching them on a bad day. We don't have to worry about, is this a good day for God or is this a bad day for God? You know, when you get up in the morning to spend time with God, we don't have to think about, has God had his coffee this morning yet? Is he ready for me? No, he's not. He's not he, moody. He's not touchy. We don't, um, he doesn't operate the way we do in our humanness. In our humanness, we can be set off like that. You can be having a perfectly good day and someone cuts you off in traffic and, you know, as Ralph said, flips you the bird and you are off, right? You're no longer smiling, thinking this is a perfect day. But you got Jesus loves you on your bumper Yeah, yeah, be careful, people. <laughs> if you're putting bumper stickers on your car, please represent Jesus. Please represent Jesus. But um, he's not like that. He, you don't have to worry about how you're going to catch him, how or, you know. He is always, he is just steady. He is just a constant love. He is a constant um, steady uh, security for you. He is a constant uh, waiting for you just to reach out to him. No matter what you do, he's not going to start lashing back at you. He is waiting for you. I like the next one. It well, says... Can I just say that yeah, one of one of the things <laughs> one of the things that I think too often we have grown up with, and I know um, Ralph shares this story a lot of times. Do you want to share a story? I can. Do you want to? This is my cue, people. All right, let's go. No. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we were told growing up, at least I was growing up that if you get on a line, God's going to get you. And I just shared what happens with most boys, they kind of push the, the line. Yes. And so what happens is, if this is the line here, we get our toes right up to the edge of the line, don't we? Yes. Right? And then all of a sudden, we slip one a little over. Risky, you know, I'm being a little risky, and we're waiting for that lightning bolt from heaven. We're looking up. And you know, sometimes we'll even take our foot and put it in and we do the hokey pokey, you know. <laughs> and it's for some of us, we step right in over the line and we're waiting and God isn't hitting us with lightning. In fact, nobody even knew what we were doing. So we were told there was an imaginary line and if we crossed that line, God was gonna get us. Is that true? No. If God was going to get you, he would have got you a lot earlier than getting up to that line. Because you've done some knucklehead things before that line. Are you with me? God has no intentions of trying to get you for something you've done. None. He is trying to say, son or daughter, I got something better for you. Where, where, what everybody's telling you was just the good stuff. It really isn't. I am the good stuff. 
See, when you have a complete relationship with God and you know how important you are in his eyes, it won't matter what somebody says about you on Facebook. Did you hear about so-and-so? Nobody does that, of course, on Facebook. It's always clean, right? You'll have enough confidence to say, I know who God says I am because that's really what's important because if God thinks I'm a big deal, I probably am. See, it's not boastful. It's just knowing who your father says you are. And if you step over the line, he's not going to beat you. In fact, if you walk all the way away from the line, he's still going to turn around and say, come back. I want, to make things, I want you to get things right with me. I want you to get your life right. Come and let's do this. The problem with, um, if we don't have an understanding of God in this area, if we think he's a God who's going to get us when we cross the line, the problem is, like Ralph said, he says, you cross the line and no lightning bolt struck you. God didn't get you. Now suddenly you think, oh, I can live this life of sin and it's okay. Because if God were upset, he'd have gotten me already. Do you see what I'm saying? And the problem is we flirt with things then that are deadly for us. And we flirt with things that God doesn't want for us. Just because he's not striking you dead on the other side doesn't mean he wants you there. What he wants is he wants you so overwhelmed with his love that you don't even want to go close to the line. That's how he wants to keep you on this side of the line, is understanding his love for you, understanding that his plan for you is so much better than what's on the other side of that line. He knows the other side of that line is going to hurt you, it's going to kill you, it's going to destroy you. And you could be a mile past that line and he's still going to be, hey honey, come on over here, come on over here. He's still going to keep enticing you back. But we've got to understand that God's not out to get us. When we cross that line, he's trying to entice us back. It's not okay that we're on the other side of the line, but what he's saying is, I've got better for you. I want you back. I want you back. I, I like the next one. It says, it takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to suffering wrong. Everybody go like this. Whew. <laughs> God holds nothing against what you've done. See, God will forgive you, and Pastor Joanne talked about this, but if you go out and you're drunk, you drive while you're drunk and you get a DUI, the police might not have the same policy that God will. Are you with me? There may be a consequence for what you did, but God will still love you. He'll still forgive you. There's a lot of people in the prison system today that made one bad decision. Well, maybe more than one. But there they are. God still loves them. God still will forgive them just as much as he'll forgive you and I. And we think, well, no, they're, they're at a different class or different, no. God says, I'm not going to hold any wrong. If you come to me and ask me for forgiveness, the Bible says that he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I said all. And people say, well, that's not fair because I looked what so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so did with their life. Listen, don't worry about anybody else's life. Just watch your own. That's right. We have enough issues in our own life coming at us. I, I have to fight hard enough and long enough to keep a good attitude some days. Are you with me? Well, pastor, I thought you were like godly. Yeah, I said, and then people do things to you, and then they say stuff, and then they step on your toes, and then they lie about you. I know that's never happened to any of you guys. I mean, <laughs> and then you're thinking, and all of a sudden the flesh starts to rise, and you're thinking, and God says, uh, what are you doing? I said, Lord, I was just going to bless them. <laughs> Not really, but since you're here, yes, I'm going to just bless them. See, we have to constantly fight that flesh and tell the flesh to shut up and do what God does and try not to hold an account against people. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. But that's why the Bible says you take up your cross daily. Sometimes it's secondly, you know, come on. For all of us, we're walking through different stuff. But if we can be like God is, our lives we will walk free as ever. You will fly like a butterfly because nothing's weighing you down. I love how this verse says, it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. You know, when we ask Jesus to forgive us of something, he forgives it. But even if we haven't yet asked forgiveness, he's saying here, he's not even going to pay attention. He's going to keep pursuing you 
past and through those wrongs that we've done. If any of you, and don't raise hands, but have done something to really hurt somebody, and you know it, and there's a shame inside of you, and you're sh- it's hard to face that person. It is really hard to look that person in the eye again. And it's like you know what you've done, and it doesn't matter if they've forgiven or not. You just feel like, oh my goodness, I, I can't. They're going to hold it against me. They're going to, you know, they don't want to see my face. The good news with God is because he takes no account of those suffered wrongs, you don't have to be ashamed to get in his face. You can come to him at any point in time and just say, God, forgive me of that. I am so sorry. And the moment you do, it's gone. And it's not remembered. And he gets rid of it. But even when we're not yet asking, when, even when we're not in repentance, and we're, meaning we're not getting out of those sin things, what he's saying is he's still waiting for you. He's still not turning his eye away and going, no, I don't want them anymore. No, he is still taking an account of you. He is still watching you. He is still pursuing you because like, he is a great guy. I like God. the next one. It says, it does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Ooh, you know what that yeah. means? That means when you were being abused, God was there and he wasn't happy it was happening to you. He wasn't rejoicing when bad things were going on to you and people were doing things to you that they shouldn't have done to you. But yet the Bible says that he was there with you through it all. Well, why would he let it happen? He didn't do it. See, he gives us a free will to make decisions and then he gives us an owner's manual called the Bible and he says, please read the owner's manual so you know how to act and react. The problem is we don't even want the owner's manual anymore. We don't want it in the schools. We don't want it in the court systems. We don't really want it anywhere because all that is is a book of rules and regulations. While you can try living without it, it's an awfully rough ride. Or you can do what God says. Since he spoke you and I and formed us out of the ground for the men and fashioned the women into existence... He might know what he's talking about. It might be worth the read. It might be trying to figure out who we are. And I like this because he is not saying, I'm okay when people are being mean or doing things to you, but I won't leave you and I won't forsake you. I'm going to stick with you all the way through. And for some of you, you shouldn't even be here today. Because what you've gone through already, most people would have quit. But God was with you. And God walked you through it and he says, I'm going to set you free out of all of that that you were put into. See, the devil set you up for failure. God says, I'm going to just unravel and I'm going to start taking apart every stronghold the devil's put on you and I'm going to set you free. Just walk with me. You know, God is a just God. And so he's seen your pain, he's seen your abuse, he's seen the hurt that's come at you, and he will make it right. We'd like to see it made right tomorrow, but it says God is slow to anger, and he gives people a chance to repent. He gives people a chance to get right with him before he he does that. But he is a just God, which means... If something's been done to you, leave it in God's hands. He will take care of it. We have seen people who have come at us and we just leave it in God's hands and we've we've claimed the verse, no weapon formed against us can prosper. And we've said, thank you, God, that you are a just God. And we have seen their lives literally fall apart. Because God isn't, now is God allowing, is he doing that to them? No, but he is lifting a hand of blessing when people are, 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 are coming at you and they are a weapon against you. So on the twist side of that, here's just a little rabbit trail. If you have been the one, a weapon formed against somebody, get on your knees and ask God to forgive you so that you can be forgiven. Forgiveness means erasing the consequence of a sin. So as we ask him for forgiveness for the things we've done wrong, because we've all done something to somebody, every single one of us, as we ask forgiveness, then his mercy can come in instead of the justice. And we can get in a right place with God because God wants each of us. He doesn't want to have to put the hammer down, so to speak. But the natural consequence to our actions does bring, or a natural action uh, 
to our actions bring consequences. So if we've done things to people, just get before God and say, look, just forgive me. I am so sorry. Help me to make that right so that there is, um, that we are satisfying the justice part of our God. But he's got your back. He sees it all. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. You know, I, as we were preparing this, I said to Pastor Joanne, I said, we could just preach the whole service just on this one verse. That God bears up under anything and everything that comes. And that's really important because as we understand that as ugly as things can get in our lives, God's love will sustain you and take you through it. The Bible says it's the love of God that will restrain you from doing something you shouldn't do. Mm. What is it? It's like he walks with you and he says, don't open your mouth when they say this. Just keep your mouth shut. And God will walk you through some of the toughest pressures that life can throw at you. And God says, if you walk with me, I still remember when my mother-in-law shared with when they lost their child. They could have been angry and bitter. They could have, they, they could have felt like they were victimized because they were. Are you with me? The fact is they still lost the child. But they chose as a couple to forgive. Was it easy? I can't imagine. But because of the choice of all of that pressure on them, God sustained them through his love and just walked them all the way through it. The Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. In other words, you're going to go through it sometimes, people. But if you connect up to God, he's going to walk you through it, and you're going to sustain. You're going to learn some stuff as you're going through it as well. I shared with my brother-in-law the other day, I'm chasing rabbits, and I, he was in the town, and we were talking, and I said, you know, some of the difficulties we went through as a church over seven years, I said, I'm so glad they happened when they did. I didn't think about that when I was going through it. Are you with me? <laughs> But sometimes you can look at your life and you think, thank God I walked through it at this level. Why? Because I learned how to handle that pain and that pressure and, 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 and get wisdom. Okay, I'm not going to think like that. I'm not going to do that. Because when people are out there and they're not the people, they're the devil that's trying to destroy you, you will learn to stay in love in certain areas. And when you've yeah. blown it, at least it's a smaller education when it's a smaller problem. The bigger the problem gets, the bigger the education is. I'd rather have a small education, learning problems, that I learn it at a root level and be able to walk through. But see, God will walk you through all of it. He's not bailing on you. You know, it, 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 it's like when you get on an airplane. If it gets really, really turbulent and it's jumping around, are you heading for the door? You're going to buckle down, pull that belt a little tighter, and say, let's ride this thing out. That's what God wants you and I to do. Buckle down, pull the belt tight, and let's ride this thing out if you're walking through it. Because he can bear you through all of that stuff. There's nothing you are going through that God can't handle, and there is nothing in your future that God can't handle. So we've got to realize, when he says fear not, he means it. He means that whatever you might go through, I am going to be with you. I am going to give you what you need. I'm going to help you through. So we've got to understand there's nothing we're going through and there's nothing in our future that God can't handle. Uh, the, the, the next one, I like this one. He, it is ever ready to believe the best of every person. God believes in you. He believes in the greatness in you. Does he see the mess ups we have? Yes, he does. But it never stops him from believing in the greatness because he created you and he put the greatness there. So he believes the best. You might be falling flat on your face and he goes, okay, yeah, you fell, but just get up. You're gonna make it the next time. He is your greatest cheerleader. He never stops cheering you on. Is he sad when we mess up and everything else? Yes, because he knows that you've got so much more in you. But he keeps rooting you on. He believes in you. He knows what you're capable of. He believes in us way more than we believe in ourselves. And maybe you've had never had someone who actually believes in you. 
Maybe you've had people cut you down and, and tell you you can't do things in life and that they're shattering your dream. You know, we've been in that place. But the good news is, as long as God believes in you, that's all you need. It really is. Ultimately, are friendships and relationships great? Yes. But if nobody else believes in you, God does. And he is cheering you on and he is saying there's greatness in you. Let's go it. Let's go there. Let's pick up. Let's keep going. It hopes and uh, its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. You know, I think sometimes if we can learn some of this in our marriages, that, you know what, we're going to walk through this. And then the next verse is that love never fails. It never fades out or becomes obsolete, or comes to an end. Love will never cease, because it can't. It's God. Are we getting that? If God is love, it can never cease. So if we could tap into that, it'll never cease in our lives either. Because if we're in Christ, then what he has is in us. And so matter what they do or they say, that love will never fade. It'll never, it'll, it'll never fail. It'll never, could we imagine if we walk through our relationships like this, that we held them at a, such a high regard that they wouldn't be disposable. And I'm not here picking on anybody if you've gone through breakups or divorces. Or, this is not, a, I'm just saying this is what God's got for our lives because we have to be like Paul, forget everything that's behind and press forward to the high call for our lives. So regrets aren't gonna help us. It's where do we go from here? Do you know, no mistake or issue that you ever make can weaken God's love for you. It just can't, it can't. When we understand that as we live a life that embraces this love of God, that love inside of us will never fail. It will never fail. It will always carry us through when we allow him to. But we've got to be people who open our hearts and allow God to love us. We've got to kind of maybe break down some barriers that we've put up of our image of God. The best way we can ever receive his love is to get a revelation of it. Because as we said, if you think he's a God who's out to get you or to punish you, you're going to hold your, you're going to kind of hold him at bay. It's like, well, God, I love you, but I'm going to keep you here because you might hurt me. No, but when we get a revelation of who God is, we'll be able to let his love come in and start changing all those little parts in our lives. And love never fails. I love it. One of the best verses ever. Love never fails. God's love for us didn't fail us. It sent Jesus. He died on a cross, paid for everything we, every sin we could ever commit. He paid for it because love doesn't fail. And his love for you, it won't fail you in that hard time that you're in. If you're in the biggest crisis of your life, his love isn't going to fail you. It's going to be there. I, I, uh, Paul wrote in, in Romans 8, uh, verses 38 and 39, I want to invite you to close your eyes and just listen to what the word says. And online and in the Winnipeg campus, just close your eyes. And as we read this, you're going to start to see this picture of who God is. It says, and I am convinced, Paul says this, that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. our Lord. That is an absolutely amazing, amazing kind of love. Nothing can separate us from. We may run as far away from God. We may not want to have our salvation that he offers us. We may not live with Jesus in our lives, but it does not separate us from his love. It does separate us from the plan of God that he has for us. It separates you from an eternity in heaven with him, but it cannot separate you from his love. You know, there's um, a quote by Jerry Bridges I just wanted to read to you. 
God's unfailing love for us is an objective fact affirmed over and over in the scriptures. It is true whether we believe it or not. Our doubts do not destroy God's love, nor does our faith create it. It originates in the very nature of God, who is love, and it flows to us through our union with his beloved son. I want to invite everybody to close their eyes and bow their heads and if you're online, be part of what we're doing because I want to invite you to have a real relationship, a real love with God. And that starts by asking Jesus into our lives. And this is how much God loves us that he just sent Jesus for us. And I want to pray a prayer. It's a really simple but it's a really powerful prayer. And in that prayer, that's going to allow you to invite Jesus to be the Lord of your life, to come into your life and change it, to make it fresh, to make it new. And I want to pray this prayer. I want to invite you. So if you're online or in the Winnipeg campus and you've never prayed this prayer, or maybe you did, but you said, man, I am so far away from where God says love is and I need to come back. I want you to pray it, speak it out loud. The Bible says if we speak it with our mouth and believe it in our heart. This is really between you and God. So we're not going to ask people to stand. We're not going to even ask people to raise their hand. I want you just to connect in with God because this is really between you and him. And I want to pray this prayer and invite you to pray it out loud with me. It goes like this, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask, I ask that you forgive me. That you forgive me. I've messed up. I've messed up. I need your love. I need your love. Fill me now with it. Fill me now with it. Cleanse my life. Cleanse my life. Help me to live for you. Help me to live for you. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this message. For more free teaching and information about The Source, please go to www.tapintothesource.com.